This mutation is called Out of Sight and it is played on Minor Evacuation. We have two mutators active, we have Pure Fire Beam and we have Remove Unseen. And as usual, our resident mutation soloer, Tutu, is going to be soloing this mutation with Setman. But before you say anything, this is going to be Setman P3. And I do not think I have featured the game with P3 Stetman, so I figured I might as well feature it on this channel. But let's have a look at the mastery. 30 points into the Gary, cooldown, mastery, 30 points into the set zone, bonus mastery, and then a 2010 split into the satellite cooldown. More evolution rate mastery here. Now, Stetman P3 is an interesting prestige. It 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 actually rewards you for consistent damage output by your units. So as long as your units are attacking and killing stuff, your units will start getting these best oil stinks, and other than that, this prestige is not particularly useful. This makes this prestige very, very nice on a mission like Minor Evacuation, where you have to try and defend some evacuation ships, or even on Dead of Night, where you can use Ultralisks to, you know, be pretty much insane on that map. But other than that, this is pretty much the only utility for this mission. Now, the one thing I do want to bring to your attention is this mastery split here. Um, particularly, I do not agree with the satellite cooldown mastery. I think you can get away without going for this mastery allocation here. Um, you can use Stetman, you can use Super Gary's Gary Zone ability to move around the map and then drop your satellites there and take advantage of that rather than using the satellite cooldown and getting the Morphe Evolution Rate mastery instead. But that is just a small thing here. But we can see we have the Mecha Infestation bit on the way already for Setman, and that is actually going to be really nice as well. So yeah, Mecha Lair, everything is all good and ready to go. And let us talk about these mutators. We have the Purifier Beam and we have We Move Unseen. So the Purifier Beam will be cloaked, but as you can see, the ping marker is available on the minimap. But the Purifier Beam will be cloaked. They will not be a big red beam of death walking around. So. If your army just suddenly dies, just make sure that you are not getting wrecked by said Purifier Beam. Now, there are a few strategies for dealing with the Purifier Beam. One is you can just ignore it and just, you know, not deal with it. And try and clear the evacuation ships as quickly as possible before the beam comes along. The other option that you have is to try and trap the Purifier Beam. So what you can do is take an Overlord or an Overseer or an SCV or whatever have you and put it in patrol around the Purifier Beam, just in a circle. Shift control, uh, shift and P, I think, is for the patrol, and just like right click around. And basically, what you can do is have this unit going around in a circle, and the purifier beam will be trapped around, between that unit's pathing. So, that is something you can do as well if you want to be a little bit clever about it. Do you know that the purifier beam will respect the safety zones on this map? So, the purifier beam will not actually move through your expansion. In this case, now this purifier beam is actually after Super Gary, but for the purifier beam to get around from here, it'll not actually go through the expansion, it'll actually wrap around the map. So that is something you can take advantage of as well. And you can see here, you can see the little shimmer that comes up from the purifier beam, but the purifier beam itself is not visible on the map. So, the evacuation ship is launching right now, and the Kelmorian mining ship is has taken a little bit of damage. Now, as far as I understand, the evacuation ship does take damage from the pure fire beam, but the pure fire beam will not aggressively target the target the ship. So, even though this pure fire beam is a little bit nearer to the ship, the, the pure fire beam will not move up towards us. But if it is in the rain, I think if it is in the vicinity of the evacuation ship, then it will be taking some damage here. And we may be able to see that yet. The beam is being taken off. I'm actually, the beam is actually focusing down Super Gary right now, so it's not really too much of an issue. I think that is the case. I'm not 100% certain. Just usually, if the beam is near, like the beam is such a strong zoning tool for Amon that it is usually a good idea to not have the beam around when you're trying to defend the evacuation ship. And this is why the trapping the purifier beam is probably one of the better ways of dealing with it. There are a few other strategies for trapping the purifier beam. If you are playing Karax, there is a strategy that I have put on this YouTube channel. Uh, it is under the Karax tips, I think, commander tips for Karax. And he can trap purifier beam with like a photon cannon and something like seven shield arrows or something. There are options available. But that is the first evacuation ship that has been saved, and now we have this attack wave coming in from the north, but Super Gary already in position. But do remember, the Super Gary is not the uber Super Gary, which one-shots everything. It will take him a little bit of time to clear this out, and as you can see, 
buildings here. And this is also this like this excavator thing is a it is an Easter egg on this map that are like one of three animations, and very rarely it actually pops out here. So this is uh, a little bit of a special thing as well. This is I, I don't think this was also intended by uh, by Tutu, but very rarely this thing will actually stick out. So there are one of three animations. One is it does nothing. One is like it moves a little bit in place, and the other one is it'll actually like stick out there. But pure fire beam again, harassing Stepman a little bit, and Stepman already has what I was talking about earlier. He's using Mecha Ultralisk here. Now I did do, I did play, funnily enough, and this is just completely by coincidence. I did play P3 Stepman on this mutation with CDG. His video is on his own YouTube channel, and I actually used the uh, Mecha Battle car Carrier Lords. So I use Stetman's Broodlords there, which also does work really well, like Broodlords are not a meme way of playing this mutation, you can use them, but do bear in mind that because they have their Mecha Locus Scepters, and I got the Mecha Locus Scepter Bay upgrade for his Broodlords, then you will also need to make sure that you're always fighting, or not always, but usually fighting in the purple zone, and make sure you also overcharge your satellites to provide those Broodlords with the extra buff to... To make sure that they have enough energy to you know, launch their local scepters because those local scepters are really really important so that is something to take into consideration as well but all in all this is going pretty well one of the reasons why i don't really like b3 stepman is because the buff stacks the best oil stacks are temporary so this ultralist right now is doing just fine but eventually it is going to be losing this best oil stack and really nothing you can do about it it's very nice when you have sustained damage output for your units but other than that it will it usually wears off and it's not really particularly nice to have as well. So we will see what is happening over here. So you can see here the best oil stacks have disappeared right now. Now this Ultralisk is gonna be a monster once once the infested starts spawning over here. But until that happens, this Ultralisk is gonna be pretty not very useful here. We have a few links as well added to the mix here, but now this Ultralisk is gonna start getting cleave attacks. And this is where its value actually will start to come in. This one Ultralisk will be able to hold off an entire site of Infested, but the next evacuation ship is being launched as well. In production, we have armor upgrades, we have the attack upgrades, and like, and you can see over here these armor upgrades. Oh, we have the actually, yeah. yeah. There we go, those are the armor upgrades. So armor upgrades, actually not too bad of a choice on this map. You can, like, especially with the Kiteness playing upgrade that the Ultralist will have, you're getting a lot of armor, and now the Beer Fire Beam is also joining in on the fun. There's a random Overseer here, just to provide a little bit of extra detection. This is going to be a little bit of a problem, because these, can, these units are going to be very, very crowded right now, but the Ultralist is going to be going full ham on the infested units here. And remember, its Cleave Attack is going to be building up so many best oil attack upgrades, you can just see the... Just, just see its attack, just, just look at the Ultralist go. Ultralisk is standing in the middle of the way. I'm trying. I'm trying to give you a vision of like how fast these Ultralisks attack. It is pretty. It is pretty insane. Like how fast they're able to attack with their cleave attacks. And remember, each cleave attack is a valid target for this as well. It is a valid. Like each cleave attack on the enemy units does provide a best oil stack if it makes the kill. So it's actually very nice. And also the other upgrade that has been research is the Mecha Mooch module, which allows these Ultralisks to actually draw HP from Super Gary, which is also really nice as well, it's keeping these Ultralisks alive. And as you can see, not a lot of Ultralisks are being added to the mix here. Stetman just genuinely does not need that many Ultralisks here. So where is Stetman going to be going right now? He has taken this expansion, I think it's good for him. Evacuation ship is ready to be launched. I think he wants to try and push and clear this area out. May potentially even launch this evacuation ship because it is so far away from the pure fire beams. And you can see over here, these pure fire beams now will not go through the expansion. They will try and wrap around here. And these things actually get stuck here now. Okay, the pure fire beams are moving around, but it'll be a while here. So I think very very likely Stepman may want to launch this evacuation ship before the pure fire beams get into position. You can see over here they're kind of like sparked in right now. But he wants to go for the bonus objective, okay. Okay, he's got to go for the bonus objective now. So 
This is actually okay because the Zerglings do not get melted by this Eradicator, so it's actually pretty okay. So he's attacking the Anti-Air Eradicator first. Generally, when you're up against the Eradicators, you want to attack the Anti-Ground Eradicator first, which is this guy, the one that moves around. Because when you kill the Anti-Air Eradicator, this thing goes into a frenzy mode and it starts spamming its abilities. But like I said, Sethman's army is pretty much invincible. Sethman doesn't really care very much here. Just gonna just try and take out this final Eradicator. Eradicator goes down. And all is good for Stetman. So where is he going to go? He's going to recall back up over here. And there are two pure fire beams. One over here and one over here. So this is going to be a little bit problematic for Stetman. But I don't think Stetman is even going to care. He's just going to be like, yeah, I'm just going to park myself over here. He's going to put in his green zone. And these Ultralists now are going to be taking a little bit of damage. But the evacuation ship has been launched. So I think what Stetman is going to do is just going to kite around and ignore these pure fire beams. Which is, I guess, okay. So pure fire beams are being dealt with over here. There is an attack wave that is that is gonna go in and try and take out this northern this the stop right evacuation ship. But you can see here this is gonna be a little bit of an issue for for super carry. And one thing to note is make sure you always have ground units in range because if you do not have any ground units, as you saw that aberration is just gonna start slapping this ship, and you will end up losing your ships as well. When you're playing with the brood lords, the the Broodlings that spawn from the Broodlords are usually enough to keep the units at bay, but it is also a good idea to add a few Zerglings. It's something I actually forgot to mention about Broodlord play. Always make a few Zerglings at least, just tank, just to draw aggro. They're not really there for damage output, they're just there to draw a little bit of aggro over here. You can see Stetman's Ultralisks now are in very large numbers. They're going to start pushing through, and the Mecha Mucha module actually doing a lot of work as well, keeping these Ultralisks alive with the help of the Green Zone helping Setman as well a lot. I would like to see maybe one more overcharge on this, these satellites here just to try to keep these Ultralisks alive, but so far so good. Like only 77 Zerglings have died. Well, not only, but you know, those Zerglings have lives too. They have families, but you know, no Ultralisks have died here. So that is actually Setman playing pretty well. And look at, the, look at the resource counts here. Like no mineral float, no gas float here for Setman. He's using up all his resources very effectively here. And he's also gotten his level 2 armor upgrades. I'm pretty sure level 3 upgrades are on the way right now for Stetman. And those Ultralisks are going to be really, really tanky. Stetman now is going to go for the full 100%. He's going to be going for Blightbringer. And Blightbringer is going to be out in just a little bit. I, I This is one of, probably one of the most annoying things about Blightbringer. is like, he just goes and borrow and you're not able to detect him. But these Ultralisks now are just going to start attacking Blightbringer. And they're going to be using the Mecha Mooch module to keep them alive. Blightbringer is still alive right now. He's borrowed over here somewhere. He's going to pop out and he's just going to get instantly wrecked right there. And there we go. Blightbringer is dead. Stetman is going to use his quick recall. And now where is he going to go? He wants to deal with this attack wave first. Which is actually a really good idea because I did not see this attack wave. One thing to notice is that the attack wave ping marker looks exactly the same as the pure fire beam ping marker. So, yes, make sure you're paying attention to the minimap. All attack waves have the same ping marker as the pure fire beams. So sometimes, sometimes they will even overwrap the, the pure fire beam and you will not notice that. So, very well noticed on Stedman. Stedman has actually added a few corruptors here as well. These corruptors purely for dealing with the Banshees. Remember, the Super Gary doesn't have the double damage that you would expect from the P2 Prestige, which is pretty much the standard Prestige that people play with, with Stedman because it's so ridiculously overpowered. So, usually when he casts his E-Gorbs, he's able to one-shot everything that looks at him funny, but because he doesn't have that right now, I think a few Corruptors, just to add a little bit of extra damage output would be really nice. And eventually, also, if he wants, he may be able to go to Broodlords, but I don't think that is the intent for Stetman. Yeah, he's just gone for Spire, he's just getting his, like, like attack upgrades here, just to be able to deal with some of the Banshees and maybe some of the Tuna Fish hybrids as well. Those things are really annoying, so... We have another pure fire beam that has spawned, and these pure fire beams now. This one is actually right in the way of Stetman. One minute, thirty seconds left on the evacuation ship. He should be able to deal with this. The pure fire beam will make its way down in time before the evacuation ship launches, but I think Stetman will be fine here. He has he has a lot of empty space here to deal with, and he has a lot of space to actually avoid this pure fire beam. And by that time, these pure fire beams will be in this location roughly. And he'll be able to get out of the way and to launch the next evacuation ship as well. So this is what? Evacuation ship number four, I think, right now. So there's one more evacuation ship left. 
And yeah, Stefan is gonna have absolutely no problem. His army, his army of Ultralisks are just like, they're just gonna cut through everything here. Mecha Mooch module keeping these Ultralisks alive. Pretty much nothing really much to say about this. The mutation, this week's mutation, is particularly simple. Pretty much any commander can work. As long as you know what you're doing, you know, you can play any free-to-play commander as well and you're fine. Like Raynor, just make sure you have adequate scans available. And, you know, certain commanders will be a little bit more difficult to play, obviously, but not... It is not an impossible mutation for pretty much any commander. And, like I said, the only reason I'm featuring this right now is because I don't think I've done a P3 statement and I wanted to highlight the importance of, you know, using Mecha Ultralisks and whatnot when you're... When you're playing on maps with sustain, like B3 is a great prestige and works really, really well. So, this is it. This is the final evacuation ship here left for Stetman, and then Stetman's just gonna continue clearing out the rest of these things. He's gonna launch this. He's gonna launch this evacuation ship as quickly as possible. Super Gary over here, just right now, just harassing some random bunker, but I guess that is okay. Evacuation ship is ready to be launched. Two minutes left. These pure fire beams are making their way towards this evacuation ship. This one is a little bit more cracked, so it's going to be a little bit more tricky, but we have a lot of evolution chambers on the way here. These evolution chambers are there just to tank and draw aggro. Setman doesn't care if he loses these evolution chambers. He's just trying to keep these volatiles off this evacuation ship. He probably doesn't need it. It's a little bit extra. It's extra styling there. Uh, one Ultralisk has died so far in this mission, but it really doesn't matter. You can see now these guys are going to start attacking the ev these evolution chambers, and now the Zergons will move in as well. We have some e groups being used as well, and the rest of these things will be cleared out, which is really, really nice. Stetman charging in here. Pure fire beams have already joined in the fray. We have hybrids being spawned as well. Evolution chambers just tanking right now for a lot of this stuff. Potentially... Setman might, uh, yeah, Setman's gonna be losing a few of these evolution chambers, which I guess is okay, but most importantly, he's trying to keep these forces off of the evacuation ship. And 30 seconds left, it's pretty much impossible he's gonna lose this game right now. There is nothing that could happen right here. His army could disappear right now, and he'd still be fine. Those evolution chambers are drawing a lot of aggro, and yeah, pretty much both bonus objectives done, and all the evacuation ships saved, and yeah, there we go. Stetman Ultralisks, very, very good unit. Particularly good against Mechanus as well. That's the last evacuation ship she saved, and that is GG.